Thank you all so much for joining us today. We're really excited to be here and share QChat, how we built that. We're going to go a little bit behind the scenes into how we built one of our newest study products, QChat, um, which is kind of a personalized AI tutoring feature. I'm really excited to share the stage with, uh, so I'm Eli, I'm a product manager here at Quizlet. I'll be sharing the stage with Pran, one of our product designers, and Will, who leads our trust and safety team. Again, if you have any questions, definitely feel free to post comments and whatever comes to mind in the chat. Um, but if you have any questions, make sure to post them in the Q&A section. Okay, we wanted to get started with a little bit of an icebreaker. We'd love for the session to be as interactive as possible. Um, I know it's always funny over Zoom, but we really want to be able to engage and have this be back and forth. So definitely feel free to drop messages as we go. Um, but one icebreaker to get started, we're curious for all of you, have you used ChatGPT or AI in the past? Um, some examples of how you might have used it, there are things like language practice, writing assistance, just like getting information online. Um, feel free to post a specific example if you want. Okay, we have lots of answers already. <laughs> no one I want to, I like that answer. Maybe today will inspire a bit. Ooh, we have creating lesson plans. Yeah, I think uh, from a lot of my friends who are teachers, that's one of the most common ones I've heard as well. Okay, we have a lot of lesson plan creating. Nice, love that. Maybe that's something we we have to look into making easier at Quizlet. Ooh, we got word problems, exercises, script ideas. I'm scared. Setting that's a super reasonable feeling. I love that. What'd you say, Pran? Setting and scoring assessments. That's really interesting. Yeah, that is a really good one. Um, and on top of the all of these, of oh, people who've said not yet instead of now. Yeah. Yeah, on, on top of all of these great examples, I also love how many people have said no. Fundamentally, this is all, I, I know it's all the buzz and lots of people are talking about it, but I think most people, it's very new technology. Most people haven't used it yet um, and excited to be able to take a little bit of a deeper dive here into how we're thinking about ways that it can improve education for students. Okay, so what is chat GPT? So AI is kind of this big term ChatGPT came around and really changed uh, kind of the prevalence of this type of technology. At, at its core, ChatGPT is designed to engage in conversations with people. So you've probably used machine learning algorithms, whether you know it or not, all, all the time. For example, if you open up Google Maps and you route yourself somewhere, there's a machine learning algorithm kind of deciding what's the best route for you based on your preferences. If you go to Google and search for things, those are algorithms as well. But none of these are kind of conversational ways to engage with AI. ChatGPT really changed things by creating a different interface. So we have a screenshot of ChatGPT on the right. Uh, Pran thought of a very clever screenshot, which is just give me a simple description of what ChatGPT is. We, we took it and made it a little simpler on the left. Um, but basically, it's trained to understand what normal conversations are like. Uh, the, the P in ChatGPT is pre-trained, so it has a lot of conversations and different information that it's using, and it uses that knowledge base to try and, try and create very natural conversations. Um, so what we asked ourselves at Quizlet when this came out was, does this have the potential to elevate the way students study on Quizlet? One of the top things we heard people talk about is like, oh, this is really going to change education. And we were like, yes, it's cool that there's new technology. But are there ways we can actually improve students' lives with this uh, technology? Because otherwise, it's not that important to us. So the first thing we did when thinking about what we wanted to build was think about what are the problems that our students have and how can we go about solving for them? So one thing we always think about at Quizlet is that studying is really hard. Um, I'm sure all of you are, are also learners. I've, I've yet to meet a teacher who's not actively learning something new. Um, but definitely thinking back to my own college days, like finding time to just study and be engaged with the studying is a hard thing to do, even if you're motivated. And rather than just reading content on your own, having a real conversation with someone about your material can be very fun and engaging. Another thing is that tutors are expensive. Uh, we see all these studies that having tutors is highly correlated with, uh, you know, really positive academic outcomes, but not everybody has kind of the means to be able to have a private tutor. ChatGPT kind of has this potential to make one-on-one -on -one personalized learning accessible to millions of students. And then one thing we also think about a lot here at Quizlet is that students are looking to do more than just memorize their content. 
So, you know, we've been known for flashcards for a very long time. It's kind of one of the best ways to just really drill content and make sure you really know it. Um, but AI gives us the potential to really personalize the learning experience for students and guide them towards deeper levels of understanding. So with all of those problems in mind, we kind of saw this new technology as a way to help solve for them. And what we set out to build was a engaging and student-friendly interface of an AI powered chat that serves various use cases from studying to fun. Wait, Pran, this isn't your slide, right? Did I just get it? No, you got it. You're good. Okay, great. <laughs> Um, so, uh, first of all, ChatGPT is a very, uh, I'm for some, it's a very welcoming interface, but I think for students, it can be overwhelming. And, and just like a lot of you were saying in the chat, you kind of don't know where to get started. We want to make a really engaging and student friendly interface, and we wanted to make it really easy to use it for studying. Um, so Pran, in a little bit, we'll go into details about how we thought about activities and ways to make it engaging, but basically we're trying to solve those student problems that we talked about. Um, but make it really easy and engaging for students. Uh, and with that, I'll hand it over to you, Pran, to talk about our design principles. Awesome. Yeah, so like Eli said, the ultimate goal was to create a student-friendly AI-powered chat. And in pursuit of that goal, we established a few design principles to align our ultimate vision for what to build with the problems and user needs we'd identified. So. The first and sort of foundational thing that QChat should do is it asks you questions. As you guys are all familiar with the Socratic method, we wanted QChat to ask you questions and stimulate critical thinking. But not only do that, we also wanted it to provide helpful feedback and not just answer questions. So yeah, that kind of, that leads into how it was an engaging, how we wanted it to be an engaging product. And the last one is we wanted it to be very personalized. So the way QChat inherently works is it takes your study set content and challenges you and asks you questions on that material. So, you know, you're studying exactly what's relevant to you when you're going deeper in on it. So next slide. Like Eli said, ChatGPT itself can be a pretty overwhelming interface. And so the design challenge here was really to create a student-friendly, usable interface of a chat. And so just wanted to showcase a couple snapshots in time of uh, what our design iterations looked like. On the very left, we've got sort of engineers first pass at what QChat could look like. Um, and then design came in, we sprinkled with a little bit of what we do and ultimately landed on um, a cleaner, simpler interface that's consistent with Quizlet's visual brand. And so on the next slide, this is what we have as QChat today. It's simple, clean, approachable. Um, and you'll notice these different activities, which we'll get into on the next slide. Yeah, so I would say that what makes QChat particularly unique is these different activities we have. So to get started with QChat, we wanted our users to have a bunch of options of activities to choose from based on what they're learning and sort of where they are in their particular study journey. So this ranges anywhere from quiz me to tell me a fun fact, deepen my understanding, be my study coach. Um, and what we really needed to do from a design perspective was create simple, usable, interactive buttons uh, to get someone started with QChat as their first touch point when they enter it. And at a high level across all the activities, QChat, what we wanted QChat to be is encouraging, friendly, it should provide helpful and relevant feedback, and it keeps students on track. So I'm gonna hand it over to Will to talk a little bit more about the values we had in mind as we were building QChat. Thanks, Pran. I work in trust and safety at Quizlet, and that means that I got to be a piece of a really crucial component of the tireless work we did to get these AI tools into our students' hands and make sure that the technology deserved to have a role in everyone's classroom. Uh, I've seen it in the chat already from this session, and I think it, you don't need me to tell you if you're an educator that uh, both in the way that some of these AI products have been designed thus far and in the way that some students have been using them, uh, things have a potential to go a little bit off track in AI's role in the classroom. But at Quizlet, we want uh, and we practice that a part of our DNA is building products um, that we believe deserve to actually have a place in your classroom and that are gonna earn the trust uh, that they support students learning and not just getting them to an answer as fast as possible. Can we go to the next slide? So this technology is really new. 
There's no one person in the world who knows absolutely everything about uh, how it's going to work uh, when you implement something new. And so you've got to learn a lot as you're building it so that you can be confident that it is going to deserve that trust that I was just mentioning in the classroom. Uh, and we learned a lot as we were building this. And I'm going to share a few examples with you here. Uh, first, just starting with what you're asking AI to do as you build a product that's going to be helpful for learning. Uh, something we learned is that AI really likes to role play. If you tell it to be Jay Gatsby, it will talk to you like Jay Gatsby. If you tell it to be Lincoln, to be Hemingway, whoever you want, it likes to play out the persona you've assigned to it. And so keeping AI on track, keeping it focused on studying rather than just giving it answers, keeping it focused on something that's appropriate for the classroom. The step one is finding a persona for it that is going to work for uh, staying within all of those right guardrails. Uh, and from there, once you've given it that persona, its natural tendency will be to be the supportive tutor that it's capable of being for students. Uh, in addition to that, beyond just trusting that it'll say the right thing, we've also implemented uh, multiple layers of scanning every single message, both that students send to QChat and the responses that QChat gives for consistency with the community guidelines and honor code that Quizlet has had as a core part of our values for years. Uh, it's really a, a belt and suspenders approach, relying on uh, multiple different systems doing this work, looking for things like the tone and the sentiment of messages to make sure they're in line with our values, and also uh, keywords within interactions to make sure that uh, they're educational and that they are staying within the guardrails of something that has a place in the classroom. Uh, beyond just the specifics of what's said though, uh, we also limit how much can be said because we found that as a conversation goes on, while AI's natural starting point, if you give it the right persona, is to stay on track, it can start to slowly drift. And that happens both over the course of longer messages and longer conversations with more messages. And so we've tried to lay down speed bumps uh, to protect against that tendency by limiting conversations length, both in terms of the number of messages and the number of characters within a particular message. Uh, the last thing is that, as I mentioned to start, this is really new technology. Uh, there's no perfect way to predict how it's going to behave when you've just given it a particular instruction, but you can get confident that it's going to be deserving of trust, that it's going to behave in particular ways if you put the time in to rigorously test it. And that means testing it not just as the person you might be with the best of intentions and the best behavior, but also in the ways that you might be protecting against uh, your concern that some users might use it. And that, unfortunately, we've seen in reality, uh, users of a lot of products have been using AI. And so by momentarily adopting the mindset of that person, testing out, finding where there are opportunities to improve the uh, safety of the technology, that gives you the, uh, the knowledge and the data to then be able to work with the team to patch them up. Thanks, Will. Um, and after getting to think through all of kind of these values that we wanted to embed into the product, as well as thinking about design principles and what problems we really want to solve for students, we were excited to get to be a part of OpenAI's press release. So we were one of the first companies given access to ChatGPT. Um, and we were able to build out QChat and launch it back in March. Um, kind of feels like only yesterday, but uh, I guess it's been almost five months now, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, so we thought, you know, it's fun to talk about QChat, but the most fun thing is actually to get to see it yourself. Um, so we want to do a little demo for you all, and we want to give everybody the option to pick what kind of set we demo. So I see from the chat, we have lots of teachers of different subjects here. Um, we're going to open up a poll so you can choose between one of these three sets. We have Spanish, world history, and chemistry. Um, and I'm going to launch this poll. Great. So it should be live now. You can pick between one of the three. Um, I want to leave time for questions. So I'm going to kind of maybe run through the demo and, and we have a couple more slides and then we'll have time for questions at the end. Ron, I think you and I have probably have like five minutes combined. Sounds good. Spanish is winning. Yeah. Spanish seems in the lead. Okay, sweet. I think let's go to Spanish. So, oops, give me a second while I switch over. Um, okay, I'm going to stop sharing. 
going to go to a Spanish set. Okay, just to speed things up, I had one of each of these pulled up. So looks like Spanish is the winner here. Oh, I'll end poll so everyone can see the results. World history was very close. I apologize for not being able to do both. Um, you all can see my QChat set on Spanish, right? Cool. Okay, so this is a sample set that I found on Quizlet. Um, maybe just to show the full process, I can even... Um, so just like anything on Quizlet, uh, a lot of settings starts with finding the right set for yourself. So you can search for the right language level, grade, et cetera. And then once you get to Spanish, you'll see this QChat button. Um, and like we talked about, we have different activities that are personalized to the individual studier and based on what they're studying. So this one has a lot of language learning specific ones. And, and we've seen one of our most popular study modes is this practice with sentences. Obviously, actually uh, conversing in the language is super helpful for learning it. Um, so we have our first question. Please make a sentence in Spanish using the word el teatro, the theater. Uh, do we have any Spanish teachers in the audience who want to, I, I know some Spanish, so I can take a first pass, but <laughs> quiero ir uh, El uh, teatro es bonito. Oh, nice. I like that one. <laughs> I'm starting on this one. I don't have any. Muy grande. I like that one. Oh, I did quiero. Please quiero. correct any grammar mistakes they're making. <laughs> they are. That's good. Quiero ir al teatro mañana. Um, one thing that's cool is it can kind of uh, adjust difficulty level. So you see this first question is all in English. Um, it may be picked up on the fact that I had some understanding of this and now the second question is all in Spanish. Honestly, getting this uh, mixed down is really, really hard, knowing what level of student is at and being able to adjust on the fly. Um, but luckily I did this one pretty well. Um, so just a little demo of how it can work encourage you all to kind of play with it yourselves, try the different study modes, try different sets and, and see what's there. Um, with that, I will stop sharing and take us back to our slides. Do, do, do. Thanks everyone for participating in that. Okay, Brian, let's give ourselves three to four minutes. I'll, I'll do this one quick. Um, so we were really excited to see uh, just how engaged people were with QChat off the bat. Honestly, when we launched it, we were like, is anyone going to use this thing? And we were excited to have literally hundreds of thousands of students using it within the first two weeks um, and, and seeing and hearing lots of feedback that they were really engaged with it. Um, so I'll pass it off to Pram to talk about the feedback that we got early on. Yeah, those numbers were super exciting. And really the next step was learning a little bit more from our users. So we decided to spend some dedicated time conducting moderated user research sessions with some of our power users. And the main goal was really to better understand what did they like about QChat and what were some areas of opportunity for improvement. So I'll go ahead and share a couple high level learnings from that study we ran. The first one being that students loved that QChat could explain beyond just what they answered. So as I mentioned earlier, one of our design principles was QChat being able to respond and provide additional context to whatever your answer was. And it was really validating to hear that students particularly loved this aspect of QChat. Um, one student wrote, when I was studying parasites and pathology, I found it could draw information from things that weren't even there. Whenever it does that, it's always appreciated. So love that that um, became a, a really wonderful value proposition for students. Next slide. Um, and then an area of opportunity, and I actually just saw this question in the chat, can you ask QChat to adjust can, to make it easier? Um, this was something that QChat can't do too well at this moment unless you prompt it. So it, it doesn't calibrate level of difficulty on its own. So an example, a student, you know, they come into a set on QChat that they've been, that they just created maybe. They're not too familiar with the information and the questions are pretty hard. And so the student just responds, I don't know, one after the other. We've been calling this the I don't know problem. Um, and when this happens, students feel demotivated because they're getting so much wrong. And so an opportunity area for QChat is to better calibrate the level of difficulty based on your engagement with it and how you present your knowledge when you first come in. So this is something we're excited to keep working on. And then lastly, um, this is a really awesome area of opportunity that we're working on right now, um, progress. So across Quizlet and all our other study modes, we have ways of helping students understand how they're doing, kind of answer that question, 
how am I doing as I'm making progress in a feature? Right now, QChat on the user facing side doesn't obviously present information to answer that question. Um, students really need to understand how many questions they've answered, what they're getting correct and incorrect, and just overall how they're making progress as they're moving forward. Um, so this is something we're actively working on, which is very exciting. Uh, and I'll hand it over to Eli to wrap us up and talk a little bit about what we're doing next. Thanks, Ron. Um, yeah, so like Ron mentioned, one, new activities are kind of at the core of how QChat works. Um, I'm already seeing a lot of cool comps in the chat of different things it can do, and some of those could be new activities that we create. Um, just in general, improving the overall quality and helping students stay engaged and on track. Um, folks are mentioning different forms of feedback, for example, like in that example, should it have told you about having the enye over the N? Um, things like that are, are something that we're thinking about a lot and kind of working with students and teachers to figure out what are the right places to improve it. Um, helping students visualize their progress and keeping them engaged so it doesn't feel endless. And honestly, a whole lot more. And we're really open to feedback. So it's a relatively new product. We've worked really hard to make sure that it kind of meets a lot of our trust and safety standards, meets our quality or values, and then it's really helping students. But that being said, we think there are a lot of ways to keep improving it. Um, so hearing feedback directly from students and teachers has been the main way we've been able to know the best places to focus. Um, so I love I'm already seeing in some of the QA feedback ideas and in the chat as well, but we really are super open. Um, so any ideas you have either in this session or or you could follow up with us, we're, we're super open to hearing about that. Um, and with that, we would love to open it up to discussion and questions. Um, I've already seen a bunch of questions come in in the Q&A, but want to give everybody a chance to add any if you haven't yet. Um, make sure to add them to the Q&A section and not chat. Uh, they'll get lost in the chat. But uh, I'll look through these and find one. <laughs> I, I appreciate all the thank yous and very nices. They're very nice of you all. Um, OK, one thing a lot of people have asked about is the uh, age level. Um, well, do you want to talk about that, or I can also talk about it? Uh, I can speak to it quickly, and if you want to add anything, feel free. But uh, oh. QChat right now is available to users who are 16 and older in uh, and have accounts that are in the English language in countries that are English language majority speaking. We are uh, actively working on trying to make sure that we can support QChat for uh, all of the learners that the technology works well in and provides good responses in. Uh, and we're excited for this to be something that we can get into the hands as, of as many learners as it works well for. Thanks, Will. I think you captured that perfectly, so I won't add to it. Um, OK, I'm trying to group these into themes. I love all of the different questions. Um, do, do, do. OK, one question I did want to answer. Uh, a couple of people asked, folk, asked questions about um, how to make sets like better for QChat. And then Hilda, you asked kind of more directly, or maybe I should leave these anonymous. Somebody asked more directly about providing images in the interactions with users. Um, so one thing that ChatGPT doesn't do, yeah, we can see all the Q&A on our side. Um, one thing that ChatGPT doesn't do well just yet is engaging with images. It's actually something that OpenAI is working on and a lot of other companies are working on is being able to interact with images. And you've probably seen maybe on different social media accounts, like there's new stuff going on with images every day. Uh, but for now, QChat doesn't do images very well. So if you have a set that, especially if it relies on the images, like it shows a picture and asks you what on the what's on the other side, QChat just will have no idea how to deal with that. Um, so really making sure that you have good descriptions on both sides of the set, make it much more compatible with QChat. And images is something that we're looking into a lot. Um, so hopefully it's something we can improve in the near future. But for now, uh, just having really good terms and definitions in your set help it a lot. Um, doo -doo -doo. OK. What's the best way to report a wrong answer given by QChat? Oh, I should probably um, mark the ones I've answered. But what's the best way to report an answer? Pran, do you want to talk about this since you were working on that recently? Yeah, totally. So we actually have a reporting flow in QChat. So I believe if you hover over any message written by QChat, um, there's an option to upvote or downvote. 
Um, an upvote is basically just saying like, I like this message. I appreciate what QChat has said to me. And a downvote will send you into a reporting flow. And in that, when you're in there, you can sort of mention whether or not you thought this message was inappropriate, irrelevant. Um, will actually, you might you might be a little bit more familiar with what some of those options are. Yeah, uh, we accept a number of different reasons that users want to let us know that there's something for us to improve in QChat. We take in that data and it's really helpful for us uh, to have folks flag when there's an opportunity for us to make QChat better. And uh, I don't know, sometimes I feel like when I'm interacting with products online and I say like, oh, this wasn't the way I want it to be, I worry that that's, uh, you know, going to nowhere, you are currently looking at three of the people who care most about that feedback. Uh, and mm -hmm. we're thankful for anyone who goes in and uses that feature so that we can make QChat the best it can be. Thank you both. Um, okay, I know we talked about the age thing already, but I do see a lot of questions around it, which makes sense. We probably have a lot of high school teachers with a mix of ages in here and middle school and lower. Um, yeah, so right now it is all 16 plus, like Will was mentioning. I think having trust and safety at our core, we wanna make sure that it's working extremely well for the students who do have access. Um, expanding it is something we're you know looking into, but we really take our kind of like safety concerns top and foremost. Um, so right now it is 16 plus, and if you, yeah, there are a lot of questions about like assigning it to a student. If, if someone is under 16, they just won't have access to QChat. Um, and that's again, so we can keep the quality and safety really high in the product, but it, it's all 16 plus right now. So I'll, I'll probably check all those questions as done. Um, okay, we have two more minutes. So I'll try to see if we have any main themes. Another thing lots of folks are asking about, yeah, Lisa, we hear you, trust me, we're thinking about it a lot. Um, Another thing folks are asking about is the progress. Um, so I know a lot of teachers assign different study modes to students. Right now, since QChat is such a new product, we honestly don't have it super well integrated with a lot of other parts of Quizlet. And, and that's kind of top of mind for us, um, both in terms of things like assigning uh, different study modes, but also just in general, it being able to keep track of your progress. Um, so right now you can't assign QChat to students and it won't keep track of progress. Um, but knowing that this is something that teachers are looking for really helps us know if we should prioritize it. So A, I love all these questions, and B, definitely feel free um, to message in about it or, or email us. But, but knowing that that's something that would be really helpful in your classroom um, definitely helps us know that it's something we should prioritize. So thanks for all of these messages. Um, and we probably have time for one more question. Do, do, do. Let's see, what are the more recent ones? Um, they're all kind of in those main themes we just talked about for the most part. Do, do, do. Hmm, somebody mentioned, um, just like how chat evolves as conversations go on and, and noticing it getting more general. Definitely as conversations expand, we, you know, the control that we have over the conversation kind of changes. Um, and that's why Will was talking earlier about, I think one of the biggest things we do in QChat that's different than other uh, kind of study areas is that we limit the number of messages you can have per conversation. And we have other filters and moderation going on in the back end. Um, so definitely as it gets lengthier, it can kind of move into different areas, we try to really limit that. So we can make sure that the conversation is super focused, uh, that students are engaged and on track with what they're studying. 